This is what it sounds like just inside the car. It gets real bad when I turn the wheel hard. I can feel it on both sides. Well, let's jack it up and see what we got. Hey, this is Joe. This is my 2016 Ram 1500. This is the 3.6 Pentastar. So, a couple weeks ago I noticed while I was down here messing with some brake stuff, or actually some ABS stuff, I noticed uh, I got a torn boot. Luckily there's still some grease in there, so it hasn't uh, caused me any issues. But, uh, it just snowed this morning, and I had to use the four-wheel drive, and for whatever reason, my driver's side also decided to start making some hella noise. So, my whole front end sounds like it's going to fall off when I'm, I'm running around now. Um, when I shake this thing around, I don't know how well you can see that. But there is there is some play in there. The boots are good, but uh, it is just making hellacious noise. So I've got CV axles for both sides. Uh, I'm gonna put them in. Hope to God that fixes my problem. Uh, they don't have that intermediate shaft at the parts store that goes between that and the, uh, the differential. So hopefully I don't need that and. I just went and bought uh, a 36 millimeter because that's what the internet said I needed for this axle nut and boy it seems kind of loose to me god damn it so this is starting off great all right obviously I've already got her jacked up taking the tires off I suppose we'll start with the calipers all right back here behind the caliper You'll see these two big bolts right here and right here. We need to take those off, 13 sixteenths. I did use a breaker bar to get those loose cause they're on there, trust me. All right, I got those bolts loose. Use two hands, pull the caliper off. Uh, I just tied it up out of the way with some bailing wire. Uh, use whatever you got, zip ties or whatever. All right, so I suppose we'll get this rotor off here. Now, I have never done this before. I watched a couple videos. I haven't had time because this just started acting up today. So I really haven't had time to uh, really dive into this. So I'm just going to uh, take a little rust penetrant and hit a couple of the bolts I think I need to take loose. Essentially, we just need to get this knuckle out of the way so we can pull that axle out. Um, so I'm going to start with this axle nut. All right, that actually didn't work out too bad. Uh, so you can see I wedged one of my pry bars between those um, bolts and mashed it into the ground. And it actually came off of there pretty easy, shit. But either way, that's the way I got it set up. I got it loose, so I'm gonna get that fucker off there. All right, after that, I suppose, uh, what do we got here? That upper control arm we're gonna go ahead and take that loose uh, I'm just going by what I've watched on a couple videos um, take note I know nothing so I'm just gonna do what a couple videos said to do uh, I've read in some comments some people got some tricks up their sleeve or do this or do that man I think it's just two or three bolts we got to take loose so I'm just gonna take them loose and make it halfway easy on myself I'm not scared to undo a bolt so Again, uh, 13 sixteenths, and that thing broke right loose. That was not hard to get off, so I'm gonna take him off real quick and move to the lower control arm. All right, after I got that nut off, um, I gave her a couple whacks on the front and the back. 
pretty solid wax, but you can see that let go. So I'm moving down to the lower control arm nut here. This is a, let me make sure I'm telling you right. This is a 15 16th. Uh, I already put the breaker bar on it. I didn't even need a breaker bar. It came loose too, so I'm gonna go ahead and spin that off. Okay, so I got that lower nut loose and just hanging there. And I remember seeing a comment saying uh, somebody had just taken the, the upper control arm off and he was able to pull this forward and wiggle this axle out of there. Well, I just tried and boy, you can get damn close, but just can't quite make it. So I suppose I am gonna go ahead and finish taking that nut off um, give the bottom a couple wax with the hammer so that drops loose so I under, as I understand it that bolt once I've got it knocked loose um, this knuckle is going to uh, drop down off of that and come off the axle at the same time so we'll see what happens that one proved to be a little bit tougher had to get out just a little bit bigger hammer and smack it just a little harder, but um, I did finally get it out of there. So I just put that nut back on, on the bottom of this just so it would stay in place and not rip out my speed sensor. But uh, just a little finagling, pull the knuckle forward. Uh, I did not have to smack the axle at all. It came right out. I mean, kind of within reason but I never had to hit it I've seen some people have to smack the end of it to get it to move around but so now that that's out of there um, I am seeing that it is not just gonna fucking uh, pull it out of there so I'm gonna get under there with a hammer right next to the uh, differential and see if I can't uh, smack it a few times get her to come loose all right now that I've crawled in here I am up under it uh, if you're following along with the shaft here I have to duck underneath this guy but that is our axle and I just gave it a real soft touch with the hammer right here and it came right loose so I'll, uh, go ahead and wiggle this son of a bitch out hey look at that beautiful all right i'm gonna need two hands to get this fucker out of here now that i got that pulled out of there um, comparing the old part to the new part uh, it looks like our dimensions are very similar close enough anyways um got two issues first issue it comes with a new axle nut but as you can see it doesn't come with those washers on it like the old one did so if we have a look over here where it attaches you can see where the washer actually grabs around the outside there uh, I'm afraid without those washers we're gonna be digging in to all the uh, the splines there yeah I don't know I don't know about that I think because they are the same thread I believe yeah they're the same thread um, I think I'm going to use the old one. I don't think. Because if we sit and compare these. I mean, look how much more area those washers cover. I think we're going to get a better grip with those washers. It's going to distribute the, the pressure more even. So I'm going to use the old, old one. Alright, so my second issue here. Uh, the new, the new part does not come with this little intermediate shaft, and I have not tried to pull that out yet. Um, not quite sure what I'm going to do, honestly. I really, really don't want to damage it, 
because then my truck is going to be sitting for a week. I've already uh, asked the parts stores if they had those, and I just can't get them. So, well, not without ordering one and waiting. So, I'm going to see what I can do about getting that out of there. Well, guess what? My truck sat for a week. After I got done with that side, I went ahead and did all the same stuff on the passenger side. But, on the passenger side, if we get down here and have a look... So that little intermediate shaft uh, comes out with the axle on the driver's side. Well, it stays in on the passenger side. If you have a good look at it, you'll see the teeth are really worn out. This thing is just, um, man, it's not in good shape. So I had to order one. Um, and because I was ordering one, I figured I'd just order two and make sure everything everything to do with this whole project was brand new so they did just finally come in today so i'm gonna see what i can do about getting that guy out of there um well i don't know i think the only thing holding it in is uh another one of these little type of retainer clips on the inside so i'm thinking maybe just a some kind of pry bar there and give it a smack and see if it pops loose. But I'll grab some tools and we'll find out. Still here on the passenger side. Uh, pounded on this thing a little bit to see if I could get it to come out. Um, while I'm down here pounding away, I got to thinking and just looking. So this is our new one. This is the only one they sell. The only one I can find for sale. But, Let's go ahead and crawl up under here. This is what we're trying to get out. But if you take a look down this shaft, down the differential, there is no way if a guy wanted to, so if we're looking at the new one, there's no way to get this, uh, this little lock ring out of the shaft if we wanted. Now let's compare how long this is. It sits in there about like that. Okay, sorry I had to scoot a little bit so I can give you a little bit of an angle on this. All right, so if I hold the new one up to where it goes, you can see it only goes to about half of that shaft. Or the housing anyway. So it stops about right there. So there is no way If you wanted to, there was no way to get this out of there. You'd just have to pound the shit out of it. And for some reason, I'm just thinking that maybe that's not the right one. But it is the only one available anywhere, whether it's a dealership or anything. So I'm having a bad feeling that this is a, a different shaft altogether. So I've made the decision that I'm just going to clean these teeth up as best I can even though they're a little shitty um, and reuse it. I did some quick research and the only things I see say left on them which is driver's side. So I'm gonna have to really deep dive into this. Uh, maybe talk to a dealership and see. I don't know. But for now I want to get this truck on the road so I'm gonna go ahead and reuse that thing um, if that part does actually fit in there, then I'll go ahead and take it back out and, and put the new one in. But I just got a bad feeling about this, and I don't want to actually get that one out and then be screwed because I can't get that part. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. Yeah, let me see if I can get an angle on this. Alright. So, I cleaned it up. Um... Got the rust and shit off of it much as I could. The instructions say to put some grease on it and get that, that uh, whatever, snap ring centered in there and that grease will hold it. Uh, I went ahead and just fucking got grease everywhere, so I really don't think it's gonna hurt anything at this point. So, we'll get out the new one right there and put her in.
All right, sorry, towards right at the end of that, uh, I kicked the camera and scooted it over, but all I did was uh, pull this up snug and get the nut started, so no big deal. All right, uh, if you couldn't see everything that was going on there, um, all I did was stick the shaft on, really, um, give it a couple smacks. Uh, I didn't have my rubber mallet out here, so I was just really easy with the, uh, with the sledge. It went right on, so no big deal. As soon as I had that on, uh, I took the lower control arm bolt off just to give me a little bit of play. Stick the shaft through here, uh, lifted it up, put that nut back on just to kind of hold it in place so I could get the teeth in here lined up. Uh, I got them kind of lined up a little bit and pinched that closed, put that nut on. Uh, turned the wheel a little bit and that popped right on through no big deal so now i'm down to this situation and i've done a little more reading on the axle nut thing and there is some serious controversy over this a lot of guys um get real pissy if you don't use a brand new axle nut that comes with it um i still don't know what i'm gonna do honestly that situation I mean god here's the old one here's the new one look how much more area that covers I mean if I put this thing on here and come back here you can see it's barely gonna be fucking I don't know this has got me I mean, not worried, but I don't know what the right thing is to do. So, it's easy enough to get to. If I do the wrong thing, I can just take it off. But, I'm going to use the old one. The threads aren't messed up. I cleaned them out. Um, I'm going to try and find a torque value. Right or wrong, I made the decision. So, another thing with this is the torque rating. This is really hard to find. Um, I'd appreciate it if any of you out there have any suggestions. Uh, what I've seen a couple times now on forums is first torquing this down to 132 foot-pounds, then rotating five or 10 times, and then torquing to 263. Uh, that 263 is gonna be a son of a bitch, but I'm gonna need two hands for this. Uh, wish me luck. All right, that was kind of a bitch, but I got it. Um, now we're gonna go with this uh, lower control arm. I don't know, ball joint, whatever. But you can see everything's just spinning. So I'm gonna have to put a wrench on here and a wrench on here. Uh, once I've got that bottomed out, up in here. Once that's good and tight, uh, from what I can see, as far as the research on the torque spec is, we're gonna get this to 38 foot-pounds, and then we're gonna spin 90 more degrees. So, let's see how this goes. All right, I didn't have a 15 16 wrench, so uh, I had to whip out the vice grips, but you can see, I was just holding on to the bottom of this guy with this wrench and spinning that is very easy uh, don't think I hurt anything so I think I'm bottomed out here I'm gonna get these off and torque it down all right there we're torqued to 38 you can kind of see my angle here so I'm just gonna pull it 90 degrees Okay, and the wheel was turning with me, so I had to go a little more to make up for where the wheel turned, but I'm feeling good about that. So, I suppose the top side, uh, real similar situation. We're gonna bottom this out, and then 
I believe we're torquing to 40, and then we're spinning 180 degrees. All right, on this top side, as I was uh, tightening up, uh, the whole thing started spinning again, just like it did on the bottom. So put a pry bar up on top, right in the spring, and just pushed it down. And uh, now the nut is just spinning. So just a little trick, I guess. Learn from another video. All right, we got her torqued to 40 foot-pounds. And now we need to go 180 degrees. I'm just gonna go to 90s since we uh, don't have room for 180. There's 90. <clears throat> All right, there's 180. Wonderful. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, I realize there is a special tool made that attaches to your torque wrench or is a torque wrench. I don't even know for sure because I don't own one, but if you really want to get down into them control arms and get 180 degrees or 90 degrees, you can get a little thing that turns and it lets you know when it's 90 degrees or 180 degrees. I feel like uh, 89 degrees or 181 degrees ain't gonna fucking matter so that's what I rolled with there is tools out there if you want to do it 100% correctly okay all right rotors next Let's see if I can slip this fucker on with one hand much easier with two all right on to the next. We got a caliper. I'm gonna untie that sucker and put him on there. Uh, generally, I can squeeze it on there without an issue with two hands. Uh, you might have to squeeze the caliper a little bit so there's enough room to get the brake pads around the rotor. Caliper on. Uh, 130 foot pounds on the big bolts there. Caliper torque down. Time for a tire. Once you got the tire on and you've dropped down uh, in a star pattern, your torque values for this truck anyways, 130 foot pounds. I don't know, drive it 40 miles, retorque it. Not sure why I didn't mention this when I was doing it, but both CV axles are the same. Both sides, same part. All right, for the driver's side, uh, because the intermediate shaft is actually comes out with the axle, um, we're going to put the new one in here, and then we'll put it in the truck. So before I put it in here, I'm going to put a little bit of grease um, in here just to keep this guy kind of centered, make it a little easier thumping it in there. And then before I put it in the truck, I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, also with the driver's side if you can see in here now I asked the parts store if I could get another another one of these seals here uh, not that mine's bad it's just a little dirty and I wanted to replace it but they didn't have one the dealership didn't have one so I'm gonna uh, be very careful and run a rag around this and clean it up as, as best I can so I don't push any shit into that front differential there. That went in pretty simple. Uh, once I got grease all around the teeth, got that little ring centered in, uh, lined it up with the, uh, the teeth inside there, I did have to give it just a little love tap with some wood and the hammer just to get it pushed in there, but uh, no big deal. Very simple. I uh, got a little bit of grease on there so I can uh, center that ring before we put it in got the seal all cleaned up so I'm going to install this thing exactly like I did the passenger side and it's something I don't think I showed not a big deal but uh, on the driver's side I did rub some some grease on uh, on the outer side to the part coming through here Thought I'd just mention it don't know if it's right or wrong but it felt right so as I was going back together I uh... When I got to this bottom bolt for the for the caliper there, 
Um, I noticed the hole was a little bit egg shaped and that was for me pounding on it with the sledgehammer. So be careful where you're hitting with the sledge. Um, you got to do a lot of pounding for this job so pick and choose your spots correctly. I wasn't sure exactly what spot I needed and to get this lower ball joint it just seemed like the right thing to do to hit here to push this knuckle down. Well doing that um, yeah I made that hole not so round but it wasn't so bad I couldn't get the bolt through. Just wanted to share that with you so you don't destroy that hole. All right, so one thing I did, um, I didn't think of it till after the fact, but I went ahead and grabbed a paint pen and made a little, a little torque mark on the, well, sorry about the sun, but on the top and bottom ball joint. So, you know, just, just cause, just in case I didn't get this bottomed out before I torqued it, I uh, just want to make sure. So I'll check on it periodically, make sure that's not spinning off of there. All right, let's talk about this intermediate shaft on the fucking passenger side. I talked to the dealership and uh, they have no answers. Well, they have an answer. The answer is they don't sell that part. His answer was uh, if that shaft needs replaced, then you have to buy a differential. Now, yeah, fuck that shit. So I did a little more research. Um, forums are talking about a Canadian company making them. I think they're like a thousand dollars. But man, I don't know. I think I found something on Car ID, but you guys are gonna have to tell me if it's legit or not, because I I don't know. I think there's stuff out there you just gotta dig deep. So check this out. Here's what I find on Car ID. So, 145 bucks. I don't know if this is actually talking about the CV axle and the shaft or just the shaft. But it shows a picture of the CV axle and the shaft. So, hopefully, that's right. It does say 2016 Ram 1500. That's exactly what I'm dealing with. And I'll be honest, this looks a little cheap, and I don't know. It seems, it seems like there's some shadiness afoot. So I would surely call somebody about something before I bought this, honestly. As I'm searching, I wind up here on Premium Parts SQC. Dot com looks like they have what we need here so it's a ram 1500 intermediate axle shaft right side five hundred dollars uh shit that hurts it says it fits these rams right here um I, obviously if you can just go to the website you can see for your damn self but two years or 40,000 km? What the hell is that? Must be European, I suppose. Uh, no reviews on it, but just saying there's things out there. You just gotta, you gotta fucking dive in. God damn it. Alright, it's been a week since I did this. Um... This was a very spur of the moment thing, so I had to just kind of haul ass uh, a lot of information quickly, and I'm sure I forgot a whole bunch of shit. Sorry, I keep getting the camera too close to me. Um, there's a lot of people out there that have a lot more knowledge than I do about this. Please comment so you can help the next guy. I did what I could. So far, so good. Um, it really... It, it eliminated a little bit of vibration I had, which I was just attributing to gravel dust and bullshit that I run into. Uh, the truck runs a lot smoother, so I'm glad I got it done. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass uh, for anybody that hasn't done it. Get ready to swing a sledgehammer. 90% of the time, your shoulders will hurt. Uh, 
Otherwise, uh, please leave a comment. I, I had to have done a bunch of shit wrong on this. Uh, I'm, I'm trying, but tell me what's up. Otherwise, have a good day. Peace.